Coming in, welcome, welcome. You are live in the Queen's Curry Kitchen, in my kitchen in Queens, where we are making dessert today. Along the way, if you have any questions, just drop it in the chat. Veena Ji will moderate the chat. I will be able to moderate the chat from here. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera angle so you all can see what is going on. I will familiarize you with the ingredients that we need for this recipe. It's just super simple. We all have coffee at home, right? Rosa, Yeah, but then you won't be able to see the stove top. That's the. Yeah, I'm going to show it to you. I'm just going to boil milk. So there's really. Um, and I'm going to bring you in. So this is just regular good old instant coffee. Nescafe, we all have that at home. You can also do that if you have like filter coffee and you use it with the K cups, you can just use that. This is good old regular sugar. I'm going to use two cups of milk which we all have at home. You can do this with any plant-based milk as well. If you don't do dairy, you can do this with almond milk, rice milk, whatever. We are going to use some nuts for garnish. And then we're also going to use some festive sprinkles like this for garnish, right? Oh, is that like a colorful? Yeah, these are like little sugar beads that you get in the okay. supermarket and they they come in seasonal colors and you can just use whichever one you like. Each one has its own opening, so you don't need to put everything. You can just pick and choose whichever one you want. So if you want to do like a gold and silver and white theme, I think that would be really good against the light brown shade of the coffee. Is it, what is it called? Is it, well, I mean, what is it? These are called festive sprinkles, Veena Oh, okay. And they come in all different kinds of colors. You get them in every supermarket at this time of the year. It's called Winter Wonderland Sprinkle Mix. Oh. They have them in the bakery section in Michael's. They also have them in the supermarkets right next to where you have all of the baked bakery stuff, baked goods. Hello, Annette. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. I also see Mila Gross tuning in. So welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. We are making a simple coffee custard dessert today. So I've got some hot water going. This is about maybe four or six tablespoons of hot water. The idea is to just extract the flavor from the coffee. If you have a cake cup or a coffee brewing machine at home, you can literally do the same thing with that. You can just totally skip that this step in that case. So I'm just going to put the hot water in this cup. Well, if you have the curate, you can do it there, the machine? Yes, you can just, I just need the coffee liquor basically. That's all I need. So whether you do it the old fashioned way, whether you do it from the microwave or whether you just uh, give me what comes out of a cake cup, that's fine too. So we are going to go in with just regular instant coffee. Yeah, if you have a Keurig, then you don't even need that. And depending on how, how strong or light you want your coffee, just give it a stir. So this is a really, really nice and strong liquor. I've just, I'm just going to let it steep for a few minutes. I will put it aside. I can put the coffee away as well because we won't be needing it until our final steps. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add two cups of milk to my pan. I'm going to cover the pot. Oh, it smells really good already. I am going to cover it so that I can get the maximum flavor retention. If you have the cardamom coffee that you bought from my website, from my online shop, that coffee will also work. That is an instant coffee. So that will work too. Let me just go and grab the vanilla really quickly. Okay. So some of the flavors that really work with coffee and the desserts around the holidays are uh, this, you know, the spicy, the woody kind of deep flavor. So cinnamon works really well with coffee. Cardamom works well with coffee. Vanilla, chocolate. These are the flavors that really work well with coffee. So once you know what are the things that are good, you can always, I'm just going to bring it back here so we can talk a little bit. You can obviously also see what you're seeing. For all the people that are tuning in from the Queen's Curry Kitchen page, do consider sending some stars to support this page if you like our videos so that we can keep them coming. So I just have to bring this to a boil. In the meantime, I am going to prepare what I need to do for my custard. So this is just a regular custard powder that I got from the Indian grocery store. I've got vanilla. If you don't have custard, you can always use cornstarch, right? So custard powder is nothing but flavored cornstarch. That's all there is to it. It's not sweet. There's nothing um, mixed in it. It's just cornstarch and vanilla flavor or mango flavor or whatever it is that you need. 
We are going to take some cold milk. It has to be cold, remember, not hot. So two cups of milk have gone into this pan. We have to bring this to a boil. In here I have some cold milk. Right? How much, how much is that? This is about a quarter of a cup. Not even. We just need to dissolve this in cold water. So just like for your Chinese dishes, you will use cold water to dissolve uh, the cornstarch. Here you're going to use cold milk or water, whatever you want to dissolve the custard powder. Okay, so I'm just going to flip you guys back here again. So you all can see. And cornstarch is 99 cents for a box. Custard powder is 3 dollars <laughs> <laughs> but essentially it's the same thing Hi Sarala, good morning. We are making a coffee custard today. What is this thing floating in the milk? Hmm, strange. Okay, so the milk is coming to a boil. I'm using a non-stick pan, which is I think best, especially when you're making milk-based desserts. I'm going to add in about a tablespoon or two tablespoons in here. Now, if you want a rich pudding-like consistency, you will also need butter for this recipe. And if you just want it to be nice and smooth without being heavy on the palate, then you won't be adding butter. Especially if you're not doing something that's molded. Like if you're not putting the custard in a mold, then you don't need to grease it. You don't need to add butter or ghee to it to make it richer and thicker. Okay, that's the difference. And this is without egg. Usually, a lot of times custards are made with eggs and the eggs are tempered. So for those people that don't eat eggs or are vegan, just make this with plant-based milk and you don't need any eggs, you'll be fine. Okay, now I'm going to just go ahead and dissolve this. Whoa, that happened fast. Yeah. <laughs> it happened very fast. No, I was very attentive to it, otherwise it would have really messed up my stovetop. So I'm just going to set it aside so it doesn't spill over. I'm just going to take the time to dissolve this completely so that there are no lumps in here. Hey Shumara, good morning. How are you today? Drop a comment if you want to say something about what your favorite chocolate dessert is. What is your favorite Christmas dessert that you like? What is it that you always serve at parties when you have them at home? Or what is one thing that you... Like yesterday I had a photo shoot and I made a dirty chai nog. Instead of eggnog, I made chai nog pudding. With citrus, um, with citrus bits, and it was really good. So my photographer and his assistant they ate it up really quickly before I could take any pictures or do a live video. So just try to focus on what are the flavors of the season and try to capture them in your desserts. It's really easy to do that with spices and essential oils. I'm gonna scrape the sides so that all of the cream can go back into this thing. Right. And before I add the custard powder blended with the milk, I'm going to go ahead and add the sugar that I need. So I will add about two to three teaspoons of sugar into here. You don't need a whole lot, depending on how sweet or... Uh, tablespoon or three spoons? Tablespoon? This, right here. Yeah, this is normal, right? Yeah, teaspoons. Teaspoon. Just give it a gentle mix. It dissolves rather quickly. Now, if you like that deep flavor, you can use molasses for this. You can use good jaggery. You can use maple syrup to enhance that deep flavor so that it will work really nicely with the coffee. You don't have to, but if you want to, you certainly can. Now, I'm going to bring the heat back up so that it can come to a boil. Whenever you drop anything that has cornstarch in it, wait for the boiling point and then add the cornstarch liquid to Wherever the boil is happening, don't add it to something that's sitting flat. It's just going to make it very lumpy, right? So wait for it to come back to the boil again. I am going to grab my whisk. Okay. This is a hand whisk that I'm going to use. I always use a silicone spatula to scrape the sides of my non-stick pans. Because they get scratched. Yeah. yeah, they get scratched and also silicone really make sure that you don't waste anything. 
So even when you're cleaning out something or you're making a pudding or you're making a cake or you have a batter, when you use a silicone spatula, you can literally scrape off very neatly. Okay, so Harcharan Kaur is watching. Good morning, Harcharan. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. I'm just going to keep whisking this and you can see it's coming up to the boil. If you like it more sweet, you can add more than three teaspoons of sugar, no problem. Now add the cornstarch mixture. This is vanilla. So keep on whisking it so that there are no lumps and then add it very gradually. This is way more than what we need. So as soon as you put it in, you will see that the thickness of this is going to change. You see this, like how it became really thick. Let me show you with the spoon. Immediately it becomes really thick. So just cook it for a couple of seconds because you don't want the cornstarch to be raw. Just be mindful that it doesn't burn to the bottom of your pan. If you fear that you can add a tad bit of water, it doesn't hurt. Right? You see how it, it immediately becomes like this really thick consistency. Right? Now what we're going to do is, instead of adding any water, we're going to go back to, remember we had, we had put away something. Who remembers what this was, right? Coffee. Coffee. Yes, okay. so we have this and we're making a coffee pudding, a coffee custard. Right. So we are going to go ahead and add coffee to this. And you don't have, like if you want it to be completely brown, you can mix it in vigorously with the whisk. If you just want it to be just like that, then, you know, be very gentle with it and just create the swirls. And that's about it. That literally is it. You don't need to do anything. Check how sweet it is if you like it to be. I think it's plenty sweet, but I'll add a little more because coffee does add a little bit of a... Mm -hmm, it does add a little bit of the bitterness to it. And now the problem is if I swirl it and stir it, then my whole zebra pattern or this marbling that I have is going to go away. So that won't be pretty. But that's okay. I have other tricks up my sleeve that I can do with this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is done. And you can do two things. You can either put them in individual um, little ramekins or, you know, smaller ramekins like maybe like this one. You can put them in small ramekins like this. Okay. Yeah, that's for individual. Right? Yeah, this is for individual servings. You can put them in shot glasses like we put it before. Yes, yes. Like these. You can put them in these. Yeah, that's good. Right? So you can do those. Or then you can put it in a bowl and then serve it family style. So whoever needs how much ever, they can just help themselves and they can get it. Now I'll tell you a couple of other options of how we can put this together. Let's say you had plum cake the night before and you have leftovers from that after Christmas, right? So you just put the plum cake at the bottom and you spoon this custard over that. And then you let it chill together in the fridge. So what's going to happen is that you're going to have cake and custard together. But when you bite into that cake, it'll be super moist. It'll give you the taste of almost like tiramisu, but not quite tiramisu. Oh, okay. Right? So it'll give you a coffee dessert taste. If you don't want to do the grains and you don't want to do the gluten and extra sugar from the cake, just take this, spoon it over, you're going to be fine. Let me just get a ladle. I'm just going to spoon this over. Now, if you notice, I've not used the entire coffee because I do want to create that marbling. And I'm going to do that. Uh, a quick question. I don't know what is a coffee, but can you add like a fruit or something in this thing? You can, but always add your fruit after your custard has chilled. Never add it when it's hot. Oh. Yeah, always add your fruit, nuts. Add it when the custard is already chilled. Do not add it to hot custard. You can add any kind of fruit, um, not not something that's watery. So don't add watermelon, cantaloupe, but you can add fruits that hold up. Like you can add pears, you can add mangoes, you can add berries on top. Once it's chilled, it's actually going to really behave itself. So you don't have to worry that much. But till the time it doesn't chill, you have to be a little careful. 
you can but try to just layer the bananas on top don't try to put them inside the custard because then it gets super gloppy i'm just going to drizzle some coffee on top and show you a technique that we can use um we can use simple tools if you have toothpicks at home or then if you have a fork let me get that okay so here's a toothpick and here's a fork now if you really don't like the thinness of this coffee you can actually add cornstarch to the coffee and make it thick like this as well or you can add chocolate and coffee together and make it thick okay i don't have a problem with the texture of the coffee we're just gonna go in and just make a nice canvas and then into here i'm just gonna add a few drops and I'm telling you, this coffee is so intense that the flavor with the vanilla is really, really strong, right? So one quick tip is whenever you're making specialty coffees or you're making like a mango shake or something, add a little bit of vanilla. It really gives a nice backdrop and it deepens the flavor of whatever you're creating. So even if you're making like a berry pudding or a berry uh, pie or apple something, add a little bit of vanilla. It really makes the flavors pop, right? Now you're going to take something as simple as a toothpick and you're just going to go this way and this way and this way. You're just going to create the swirls and you have to do it fast because your pudding is thickening up already, right? You can either use a fork and you can do it that way too. You just dip it in and you go like that, you go like that. Whatever design you want to make, you can make it. You can create something. Yes. So then when it comes out of the fridge it's going to already have this pattern on it then you can go back and you know add nuts or whatever it is that you want to add then you won't have to design if you add all those things in it right no you i mean you have to place them you can't just put it everywhere you have to pick and choose what are the areas that you want to place it yeah. you can maybe just have nuts around the periphery and not do anything in the middle now i'm going to give you one very important tip that we often um, make a mistake with when it comes to custards People say that there is a thick skin on top, there is a malai on top, which I don't like. I'll tell you the trick to that. Uh huh. And so they say, you know, it, it comes in the mouth and children don't like the mouthfeel of it. It's very gloppy. Everybody complains about that. So the, the way to avoid that is some people say, well, don't use full cream milk, don't use whole milk. But the richness of the custard, especially this, since it doesn't have butter, it doesn't have egg yolks, it's going to be a very flat, bland custard if we don't do it with whole milk, right? So what you do is you take a piece of cling film and you put it in, but you have to put it so that it touches the surface of the custard. Don't keep any distance between the film and the top of the custard. So it should really touch. You may lose some of the patterning, but once it chills, it will be very easy to lift off. You won't lose much. So this is the way to do it. Just make sure the skin of the custard is touching the film in every possible section. Right? And then whatever is the overhang, you can just drape it over your bowl and press it. Okay. So this can now be chilled in the oven. It's going to do one little corner. And whatever extra coffee you have, don't throw it away because when you take it out after chilling, you may need this coffee to drizzle or if you have individual portions that you want people to pour it on, you can add some chocolate syrup to this and make it into a sweet chocolate, coffee chocolate syrup or something and they can just spoon it over their desserts based on their individual preferences, right? So always have the cling film touch the surface of the custard so that it doesn't form the skin. And then you're going to chill this for about... I think three to four hours is usually enough, but again, um, the longer it sits, the better it gets because all the flavors get a chance to work together. So that's literally the best thing. Now for the garnish, I'm going to use some pistachios and some walnuts. Okay. You can use whatever you have. And we'll just prepare those. We won't be putting it in because the custard is still hot. But you can keep it handy. And also, if you're hosting a large party where you don't know if someone's going to be allergic to nuts or peanuts, then you can serve the nuts on the side so that people can do their own toppings, right? So walnuts, pralines, um, pistachios, all these things go really well. Almonds, they go really well with stuff like this. So we'll just create some 
toppings for it. And for that, I'll teach you the technique of how to chop nuts with your knife. Okay, so the without the nut without the nuts, I'm gonna do the demo. So the trick is to hold your knife at a point down here, right? And then also put your hand here. Oh. And to swivel your knife this way. So it's almost like you're working with a compass and trying to make a circle, but your motion is jab, 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 jab. But don't don't pivot, just pivot it from here. Don't let this part move, right? You don't need to go like that for nuts. So you start out by doing that and then the more you go back and forth, the more with every chop it becomes a finer and finer chop, right? So this is how you chop your nuts without smashing your fingers, without losing any digits from your fingers because you do need those hands to open the Christmas presents, right? So this is how you will chop your nuts. Just every time you go back, it's a finer mince. If you like them coarsely chopped, don't go back and forth too many times. If you like them finely chopped, then go back a few times. And I'm doing it really fast, but trust me, I also didn't know it. It comes with practice. I was not born with this skill. Right? So if you want to make it finer, you can make it finer. You can't put it in the, in the blender or something? Yeah, you can. The, the thing with when you put nuts in a blender, one really bad thing that I, like, that I don't like about putting things nuts in a blender is that they start releasing oils. From the heat of the motor, they start releasing oils. So then it has like this rancid smell. And if you don't keep your nuts in your fridge, then it'll really get very hot from the motor of the grinder and it's going to have a very rancid, like oily smell. Yeah, so motors always have heat in them, which is why even when you buy a juicer for your fruits, Buy a cold press juicer that is a slow masticating juicer instead of a centrifugal one because the heat of the motor kill, will kill all the nutrients from your fruits and all you're consuming is sugar without fiber. Yeah, Which is why in the old days when they used to grind the masalas in the motor and pestle that looked like this, the food tasted very different because the heat of the motor doesn't uh, kill the um, aromatics from it. So again, this is this. Now, if you have very pretty dry fruit, like you have these walnuts that are perfectly shaped, you don't really have to chop all of them. You can chop a few and put them inside. Um, I mean, presuming you're putting it inside, but if you're serving it on the side, you can put these on the side. And then when you're plating your custard, you can literally just take the really pretty ones. Okay. And you can decorate them. You can do that. Too. You can decorate it facing up right you can do that you can also sugar coat your nuts you can do all kinds of things with this you can do a combination of berries and nuts all of that is possible and so keep these in little ramekins right next to your dessert station if you want to serve cake on the side you can serve cake and that on the side and one other thing that goes really well on top of coffee desserts is this drinking chocolate you can do cocoa powder like sweet cocoa powder this is from india but you can do sweet cocoa powder which pretty much does the same thing and you can just add a little bit of sprinkling of this. You can serve some cinnamon um, powder on the side. So people can really customize it and make it their own. If you want to serve your custard alongside vanilla ice cream, that's great. If you want to serve it alongside cake, that's great. So the nuts are ready. You can actually put them away. And then on the day of the party when you're serving your dessert, you just take it out of um, take it out of the fridge, remove the film, and then add any last minute decorations that you want to add. And also if you want to garnish it. You can garnish it with the whole walnuts. You can garnish it with whatever things that uh, you want to put on top. Or if you want to just serve everything on the side, you can just make a dessert station. So you have the cake separately. You have the custard separately. You have a bowl of fruits. You have ice cream. So people can do a mix and match. They can just eat one thing and not eat the other thing. And then you have the uh, toppings. I think I'm going to ask you. Uh, yeah. I think maybe it's a silly question. But can we have like a pound cake? Like for example, you said cake, right? Uh-huh. Like yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there is a very popular dessert where you have cake at the bottom and then custard on top. Um, I personally, for that one, I prefer the custard to be a little thin because then it, then it really goes into the groove of the cake. But if your cake is a little dense, then all you need to do is just poke it with a knife. I mean, poke it with a fork and make some holes in it. So it'll seep into all the liquid. And then you let it sit for a bit. So then when you bite into it, it's super moist and it tastes like... I don't know, the Black Forest cake from India. That, that's how it tastes like. If you give it the time to... I think I'm going to have to try it. 
think that's it. That's it. I've seen that. People doing like that, yes, cake and custard is really, really popular. Even in my family, in my mom's house, it's a very popular combination. So whenever they make like a basic cake, you can always amp it up by serving it. So if it's a tea cake, you can amp it up by serving it with custard as a dessert after dinner or something. But tea cakes are generally eaten at three, four o'clock, you know, with your cup of chai. So you can actually just make it whatever you want to make it. Yes, absolutely. Depending on how you're serving it, depending on how you want to present it. And you can also use store-bought cake. You don't have to make everything from scratch every time. So I'm a big um, supporter of semi-homemade. You can buy it. You can buy a store-bought cake from Entenmann's. You can buy, um, let's say you have chocolate muffins that you had for, uh, you know, Christmas brunch. And then those are left over. So just take one muffin, cut it into small pieces and then put that at the bottom. Put the custard on top. So there's several ways to actually uh, creatively use whatever you have. So my thing is like if you have a, let's say we're having a, uh, I'm hosting a Christmas lunch or mm -hmm. you know, like late lunch or whatever. Yeah. So even with this thing, what do you suggest that we should have? Fruit or what combination, what kind of desserts we should have with that? So, so that's a really good question, Vinaji. So for all my Queen's Curry Kitchen people that are watching, Vinaji from the Diagala just asked that if I'm doing a Christmas lunch, then what other kind of desserts can I serve with this? So with this, it goes beautifully. Like if you're setting up a dessert station, right. you can do you can do store bought pie. You can do a tub of vanilla ice cream or eggnog ice cream would be really nice. Okay. Right. And then you want something acidic because everything is cream, cream, cream. So you want to break up that with something acidic. So maybe like a, a nice berry bowl or fruit bowl of fruits with pineapples and strawberries and whatnot. You can do chocolate covered strawberries. You can do a platter of that. You can do fresh fruits. You can do jellos, you know, like just jello or sorbet to just clean your palate after all the dairy. So you can do a jello or a sorbet, that would be really nice. You can do little smoothie shots. So you just make a really nice smoothie with tropical fruits and lots of ice, or take the fruits and freeze them in the fridge, in the freezer, and then take them out, add some maple syrup, and just blitz them. So they'll be like my that nice smoothie consistency. And you just serve the smoothie shots in these cups. So it's like nice and colorful. You can pick whatever fruits. I mean, uh, like you have a nice table for the dessert. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes, you know, you're just doing a wine and dessert party. You can also buy these kind of frozen fruits and literally just oh. pop them in the in the blender. You can put like a pina colada mix to it. You can add some coconut milk and make it into a pina colada smoothie shot or whatever. So there's really a lot of things that you can do that don't have to take up all of your day. Um, and one other tweak that I have for people that love berry smoothies, if you have kids that like berry smoothies, you have to get this beetroot powder. It comes in a powder form from the Indian stores and you can literally sneak this into your smoothies. They will think it's the color of raspberries, but actually it's beets and beets work on a cellular level to enhance the oxygen uh, in every cell of your body. So if, if you want to cheat them and if you want to I shouldn't say cheat them. I think you're doing them a favor. But if you want to trick them into thinking that they're drinking berry smoothie, put the berries, but also put in some beets powder. It's going to give it that nice, vibrant. It's an Indian store. Yeah, it's from the Indian store. You have a section where they have the moringa powder, the beetroot powder, the tulsi powder. They have all those powders. So you can do it that way. Okay. And it's really good. You just have to just do do a little bit of beetroot powder every day in some form or the other. Make a roti out of it. Put it in your atta. You can cook with it. You can make a raita out of it. It has no flavor or taste, but it's really the powdered form. So even though you don't have time to go to the store and buy fresh beets, you can still use the powder. Right? And anything that you're doing with berries, if you're missing the color, use the beets powder. It will give you that natural fuchsia kind of you know, that wine color. You'll get it in that. Okay. Uh, I just want to tell the people who just joined us. Yes. Uh, Looper just now, she just showed us how to make a beautiful um, coffee custard. Coffee custard uh, pie. No, 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 sorry. Custard, coffee custard, right? That's coffee right. custard dessert. We just finished making with that. The, with the coffee. Mm -hmm. With instant coffee, with milk and sugar. You don't need a whole lot of stuff. Those are good, good you stuff. just need that. Stuff in it. So with that. And she's showing us how to garnish it. She's showing us all the different tricks 
what to put in there, like tweaks, for example, which we can... We're talking about all the things that complement it, all the things that can work together with cake, with nuts, with fruits. How do you present it? We talked about the complementary flavors that work together in this season. So if you have not given it a try, definitely give it a try. If you missed the video and you're just tuning in, head back into the video and catch the replay. It will be on the Dhyagala and it will be on Queen's Curry Kitchen. So for all the people who tried the apple pie shots and sent me pictures of what they created and loved it, thank you so much for that. If you're watching me on the Queen's Curry Kitchen, definitely consider sending some stars my way. It will greatly help to keep the channel afloat. Um, for all the people that are watching from Dildi Agala, I'm in New York, so if you need any catering, any meal delivery service, I have all of that. Check out my website for information. If you're trying to explore Indian food but don't know where to start, I have ebooks on the subject, right? From rice dishes from India, breads of India, restaurant curry secrets of India, street foods of India, um, the famous beverages and chutneys. There are classes also that I teach online. So if you want to really start your journey with Indian food, definitely consider following the Queen's Curry Kitchen and turn on your notifications so that when we go live, you'll be notified first. Like, uh, almost every, not yeah, I try to do it quite frequently. I wanted to do one yesterday, but I it, with, between the photo shoot and everything, it was just so crazy. We were pressed for time or I would have definitely done it behind the scenes. Um, so yesterday we did a photo shoot for a magazine cover and I was making a lot of fusion dishes for that magazine cover. So there was uh, chicken tikka tacos, there was uh, puri sabzi, and then there was Indian style sunny side up eggs. And so it was like a nice brunch. And then I did dirty dirty chai uh, mousse cups with meringue, with <laughs> dirty chai mousse cups with citrus bits I did that um, and you know they they absolutely loved it so yeah we keep doing something or the other let me ask you a couple of, couple of questions I know you're multi-talented and everything when I met uh, Looper that time she was, she was in fashion and uh, yes I used to have my own clothing line I was a fashion designer for 25 years about 12 years ago I think I went to some festival India Association there we had India Fest yeah so many people, so many people, so many people with clothes, jewelry. I don't know, my mind was, I just got attracted to... Okay. Yes, we have been friends a long time. We have been friends a long, long time. Now, so from that day, uh, I said, I've got a few things. I said, you know what, I like these earrings. And, you know, we started talking. And then I said, I do women's program. Uh, just I'm just going to say goodbye to all the viewers from Queen's Curry Kitchen and just hop back to you so that we can take questions and comments. Yeah. Thank you everybody for joining me. I will be back on Thursday doing a live making a butter chicken biryani and I will be making vegan shepherd's pie samosas for you. So stay tuned. Catch the replay of this video if you missed it. And then I will see you in another video real soon. Turn your notifications on, honey. Do not forget, check out the website for a free download to the Chana Masala recipe, www.queenscurrykitchen.com. As always, be blissful and flavorful. I will see you again soon. Bye.